hello everyone and welcome back to this channel thank you for clicking on this video so today we'll be making this boo boo it is fully lined has inseam finishing and has pocket as well and the lace part has underlay so just follow me let's achieve this boo boo and please give this video a like thank you so these are the fabrics we'll be needing this is the lace and this is the satin fabric for the underlay and this is our lining for the overall lining and this is the african print to be combined with it okay so i'll set these two aside the lace and the lining will be set aside so i have actually folded my fabric and arranged it the way it should be because we're joining the lace part to the african print so what i've done is this i have prepared the edge where i want to join with this so the upper part or the lace part um, measures 30 inches and I added one inch for allowance for joining it here and uh, our shoulder seam allowance. So the total length of the dress or the gown is 54 inches. So if the upper part is 30 inches, then this other one will be 24 inches. But I decided to just fold everything and place it this way because by the time I'm done cutting, I'll then use this one to cut on the lace fabric. Okay, so it is a booboo -boo, uh, gown. So I have folded into four because I want to cut the back and the front together. They will not be zipper. So that's why I folded in. I folded my fabric into four. And the measurement you need. For folding depends on how wide you want the lower part to be so it's not like your biggest measurement like the hip or the post no it depends on how wide you want the lower part to be how open you want it to be that is what you would fold it okay so that is what i have here so i will now place my measurements okay so we're just going to draft like the basic we're going to like take the basic uh, bodies I like to pin this down together here so it doesn't shift. So what I did is this. I just placed this like half inch on this one. So that half inch is for joining it. Okay. So I just mark out the top as I always do for my shoulder seam allowance. Okay. So I actually want to use a gold chalk so that you would see my markings. So this is our shoulder line. From here now, I'll place all the vertical measurements. So the bust point is at 11 inches. The under bust 15. The waist is 18. And the hip is 24. So I'll just repeat the same point so that I can draw a straight line. Then the full length, the full length of the gown. So we need to place our fabric, adjust our fabric and place the full length. So the full length is 54 inches. That I'll mark at 56. That is, I added two inches allowance for hemi. Okay. So this is it. So let me also repeat it here. So I'm just marking the full length. So I don't know if you can see this. Okay. So this is the full length plus the hemming allowance. Okay. So let's take you back. So now I'm just going to draw my lines. So ordinarily, when you want to combine um, fabrics like this, you can just go ahead and join the African print to the plain fabric or this lace you're using. But since I would be lining the lace, that is, the lace will have underlay. That is why I decided to just place it this way until when I'm done. Cutting. That is after cutting, I'll use this to cut on the lace 
and they place the underlay under the lace before joining it to the African print. Okay, otherwise you can go ahead and do it and just and join these two. Normally, if you want to do a style like this, you can actually use only the lace. That is, you can join your lace to your African print. Then after stitching, you use the satin to prepare like an underwear for it, okay, like um, shimmy for it. But this client wanted lined. She doesn't want to wear the shimmy separately. Okay, so that's how we have to do it this way. So now, I'll mark the shoulder measurement, which is 8 inches. So this 8 inches includes the half inch for joining the sleeve. Then the the uh, neck width 3.5 is okay because we're working with this and the neck depth 3.5 is okay as well so we don't want it very open okay so since i'm cutting the back and the front together i would mark out the front neckline and the back neckline as well so for the back it is one inch Okay, so the back is higher than the front. So I'll first of all cut out the back neckline, remove the back before cutting the front neckline, okay? So that is how we go about it. So from here now, I'll come down by one inch for my shoulder slope. And just connect it, okay? So I hope it's no more than one inch, this tape. So this is actually where we have it. So then better use my ruler for accuracy. So my chalk is full. I just want you guys to see the markings. Okay, so from here, I'll place my armhole depth. Okay. So this is armhole depth. Then I'll create my shoulder seam allowance just by stepping up by half inch. So I don't forget. So that is it. So now at this point, I'll place the both circumference divided by four, which is 10.75. Sorry, 9.75. 9.75. This is it. And since it's a booboo and it will not be having zipper, it has to be free. Okay, it has to be free. So I'll add about 1.5 inches for ease. So it means that for this 1.5 inches, it means I've added 3 inches at the front and 3 inches at the back. That is 6 inches altogether to the measurement. Okay. So that is, I think that is okay. It's, it's free, it's the free gown. Mm -hmm. So that is the 1.5 inch for ease, then 1.5 inch again for seam allowance. So all together, I'm adding three inches. Okay, that should be three inches for my allowance. So now we'll create our arm hole. So just so since it is a boo boo, I'm not actually going to like start uh, making special arm hole. So this is just okay. Just curve it to this point and it is okay. So now this is the bust point. This is the under bust. So at the under bust, I'll place the under bust circumference divided by four. Okay. So under balls divided by four is eight point seven five plus the three inches for ease and for seam allowance. Here it is, okay. Then at the waist, though the waist and the hip, I, I the measurement is not actually necessary because I'll be connecting from the from the under balls down. But you can still place your measurement to be sure that. Whatever and um, that to be sure that your line that is the measurement falls within the line you'll be extending. So that's why you need to place your measurement. So the waist is 9.75. Okay, plus the three inches. Have it here. 
Then the hip is 11 inches. So the 3 inches. So this is it, okay? So we are connecting this way. And like I said, we would extend it down from the underboss. So if you want to, you can either use from the underboss or from the waist, depending on what you want. But it is a bit uh, free when you connect from the underboss, okay? So you place your, your ruler like this, you connect it to the end of your fabric. So if you check it and your hip measurement does not fall in, you need to extend it. You need to go out a bit, okay? You need to go out a bit. So when folding your fabric, you need to take note of that as well. So I would just you know, try to connect it, going out a little bit from... You know, here so that the hip measurement would fall in would be parts they would be in and we have it there so now we we'll connect it to the end okay so, hope you can see what we have here. It's connected to the end like so. So I'm just going to, you know, cut it out following what I have. So I first of all cut out the back neckline. So I'll remove the back and cut out the front. Okay. Remove the back, align it back, and now I'll cut out the front. So this is what we have now. So I would use this to cut on my lace. I'll just, you know, match it up with the lace to become one before joining it to the lower part. So I have cut out my lace using the satin. Okay. So I simply folded my lace, placed the satin on top and I cut. So now I have use my pin to hold it to the satin so that it will become one piece okay so there are different ways you can actually like fix your net your list your satin fabric so that it will become one piece you can place hemming gum under the lace then you iron so when you're using hemming gum make sure you're placing it on the bold part of the lace so that it doesn't show because by the time you iron it they will the white ST will be showing, okay? So it's necessary you place it under the board designs. But for me, I started to use pin. So I have used pin to pin it all around. I pin the side, the lower side, the neckline, everywhere so that it will become one piece, just like you can see. You can see it is not moving. The lace is not moving away because I used pin. So I'll carefully um, stitch it down. Okay, I'll stitch it down all round, everywhere that I have held with my pin. I'll just stitch it down. And if you're using a matching color thread, you can as well stitch, you know, the inner part of the lace. So that everything will just sit with the satin, with the underlay, and it will become one piece. So when you um, combine it with the African print, it will just flow, you know, it will just be one. So I'll go ahead now and stitch it. By the time I'm done stitching everything together, then I would join it to the African print before we we'll then cut our main lining you know, to line it up fully. Okay. 
so let me go ahead and stitch this down so this is the front and this is the back i did the same thing to it okay so this is just how to go about it let me go ahead and stitch everything down so i will see it i'm stitching the lace to the satin and i have joined the african print as you can see this is beautiful so I've also cut out what I'll be using to embed the sheet or to you know, make it beautiful. So I'm stitching this to it. So this is from the African print. So I just cut this out and I'm going to like stitch a lining on that dice. I'll place lining on the good side. After stitching the edges, I will cut out you know the center of the lining, then turn it out. That is to help finish the edges so that it's not free. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that, and I might even stone it to give it that link. Okay, so that is it. So now I will cut out the lining. So I'll just place my lining on fold, then place this on fold and cut out full lining for it now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that and for the neck area, I also feel like making a design there. So, but for now, let me just cut out the line first. So, after cutting my lining, this is my lining here. I went ahead to join the back and front at the shoulder separately. I joined the lining separately and I joined the main fabric separately. So, the reason for this is I want to create a neck design. That will just go around from the front to the back without it joining at the shoulder so that's why i made it this way so by the time i'm done creating that design i will now stitch my lining okay at the neckline to read so let's go ahead and do that so from my main fabric now i'll just spread it open targeting where i want to use for my design okay so i want something around this side i want to have it something around this side but i don't know if this area will be okay but let me just try and see what i have there okay so i would open up my neckline and place it on it like this Make sure you open it very well. So you can actually target the midpoint of your design. And uh, you target the midpoint of your neckline as well and replace it. But I'll just use it this way. Okay. So by the time you open it up like this, you're going to now mark out the neck. So I'm going to mark it out so i'll just use my chalk to mark then after marking it i'll look at it and see what it will give me outside the circles so this is what i have i don't know if it's obvious So this is what I have. So by the time I cut out this one, I'll then use the outer part as the border for my neckline. Okay, so I think I should go with that. So now I will still cut out this design the way it is, then cut out the neckline. So let's try it and see what it looks like since I'll be having something like this at the middle. So if it's pointing and the other one continues, it will be nice. So let me cut it out so after cutting it out this is what i have okay so i just made a little space and cut out the circle so let's place it on our neckline to see what it looks like so i'm just going to like find the, the midpoint of it and place it at the midpoint of the neckline like so so you can see that this is beautiful
So you can see what we have here, and I think this is beautiful. I love the way it's turning out, and I love working with fabrics that have uh, patterns. So this one now would come in, okay? So I'll just like place it the way that it can relax well, or it can just fit in into the space that I have. So I think I'll go with this, okay? I think I should go with this and uh, this has going to look. So for this one, I have prepared it by using my lining, as you can see. I, so I stitched the lining on the good side of the fabric, then made the space, made a space here and turned it out. Then I ironed it and I know most of you know how to do this. So I'll do same for this one, okay? I'll go ahead and stitch my lining all around, then turn it out from this opening, then we'll stitch it to the neck line and uh, then stitch it, our lining. Okay, so I hope you love this too, the way I'm seeing it. <laughs> you know, they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So I don't know, I'm seeing it beautiful and I hope you are seeing it beautiful too. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't done so up to now just hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so whenever i upload a new video you'll be among those that will be notified so don't go away let me go ahead and stitch everything i'll also show you how i would stitch the lining and you see the final look of the dress and the sleeve as well okay so my neck applique is ready yes you can see what i've done to it and note i marks where i have the front neckline and the back okay so you need to take note of that as well while cutting because you know the back is different from the front so now i'll get my my boo boo or my gown and this is the neck i mean this is the front which is deeper than the back okay so i actually reduce the back a bit because i you know thought it nice that since there will not be zipper the neckline should be wide enough for the client to be able to put on the dress, okay, without struggling. So I had to reduce the back a little bit, and then this is what we have. So by the time I stitch my lining as well, by the time I turn with my lining as well, the neckline will be reduced a bit. So when you're cutting your neckline, take that into consideration so this is the front so it would go this way now you need to also like find the midpoint because that is actually how it should be that's how we positioned it to cut so you need to find the midpoint and align it okay align it so i'll just use chalk to mark it I don't want to notch it just this chop to mark it so that when I open it up, I would still know where I marked. So this is it. So you align it to the shoulder. Okay, so open up your shoulder seam and align it at the shoulder there. And I'll pin it down. So I'll do the same for this other side. So after doing this, you can go ahead and actually stitch your lining and the you know pattern together so that you just have it as one. But since I've left the machine area, let me just go ahead and pin it. So I'll use pin to hold it. So you also align this side and you pin it down. So by the time you have pinned it down at the shoulder, you can now arrange it well. Open up your shoulder seam allowance, then arrange it, okay? I hope you're seeing what I'm doing now. So you pin it at the shoulder, then you arrange it neatly how you should relax at that neck area. So I just, you know, thought of this. I, I wasn't giving this tie. I looked at the fabric and uh, decided to take advantage of the pattern. And I came up with this, okay? So, you also open up this side. You pin it down. So, by the time you have pinned down the shoulder area, you can now go ahead and 
pin the rest part or stitch it that you can stitch the neckline all around then you also top stitch this one okay so but before you do that just look at it very well and make sure it is sitting how you want it so you have to make sure it is sitting how you want it okay so i also place this one to see how it's going to sit but i don't want this one to cross so it has to start from that side so this how it's going to be on it or like this whichever way so we need to take note of that before going to stitch so i don't know whether flowing this way or flowing this way whichever one that is okay so i think it should go like this since it's coming from the top it should go like this so that means i'll have to stitch this one first before stitching this one so that this one can come on it okay so whichever yes whichever <laughs> So one more thing before you go ahead to stitch, you need to also find the midpoint of this side so that you align this at the midpoint. So I'm just going, I will measure it then. Here the midpoint. So here is the midpoint. I will mark it. So this one is that is, will be here. So I'll just pin it down here. So that whichever one I'm stitching first, be it this one or that one, it will just you know position itself in the right place. So I'll pin it down here. Then after pinning it down there, I also measure this side. So you need to check from here to here what you have. So it's equal. It's equal. So I'll pin it. So we don't want it to just look scattered. We want it to be neatly arranged. That is why I'm taking my time to check it. So I'll pin it down. So I'm done stitching the pattern and you can see. So you need to also take note of the edge of your pattern. So my the edge of my pattern is white. Despite the fact I was working with orange color thread, I had to change the thread to white so that it would match with the border of my um, pattern. Okay, so you have to make everything look neat. So I'll just remove all the pins I used in holding down my pattern. So next thing now is to fix our lining, okay? So I would... So the next thing now is to fix our, our lining. So this is the lining. Remember I told you also stitch it at the shoulder like you did for the main fabric. So we're going to just, you know, place it. So take note of the front. So now you just place it this way. So this is my the front of my neckline. So this is the front, okay? So you place it good side facing each other. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. You place it good side facing each other like this. And you match it up at the shoulder. So you open up your shoulder seam allowance. And you match it up. Okay? So you just match it up there. You pin it. So after pinning this side, you pin this side as well shoulder to shoulder that is where you uh, stitched your shoulder just open up the seam and you match it up okay so you pin it down then you go ahead and stitch all around stitch the neckline all around so you go ahead and stitch your lining to the main fabric so i've stitched the neckline with the lining and i went ahead to also close up the sides okay so now we'll just push everything inside or we'll just like raise it like this. Just raise it or take it out of the way and also close the main uh, fabric, okay? That is, we'll also stitch this one so that by the time we are done stitching, we'll have our lining inside, okay?
okay so i'll show you everything we we'll have our lining inside and our main fabric will be out okay so i'm done stitching the sides it's now time to bring out our lining that is now bring the lining to the back that is inside okay you can see how i stitched the lining as well so by the time i turn it to be having sort of in seam finishing so after turning it you see what we have here you can see our neckline so we'll just give it a very good press okay so you can even top stitch on the lining if you want but i don't do that most times i just iron it out nicely and it would relax so you see the armhole and you see the sides so you can see that the seams are hidden so this in seam finishing so for the lower part, you can hem the lining separately and hem the main fabric separately. So that is it for our booboo gown. So remaining the sleeve. And also the pocket. I actually forgot about it, but let me show you how to go about that. So I have fixed the sleeve. So I have a video on this channel on how to make this type of sleeve, okay? So that is a trumpet sleeve. And then when I thought I was actually almost done with this booboo, I remember that the client loves pocket in all her clothes. Like there's one cow caftan I made on this channel. I put pocket in that cow caftan, it belongs to this same client. So I actually wanted to ignore pocket on this one, but she called me and asked, I hope I put pocket in this booboo. And guess who the client is? She's my mom. <laughs> so I have to open up this part. That is, I measure from the shoulder to, you know, the waist um, point. So the, the pocket is between the waist and the hip, okay? So I open it up, and this is only on the lace. The lining is just there. I didn't touch the lining. So I'm going to fix pocket here. And I have cut out what i will be needing for my pocket by simply placing my fabric on fold and i place my hand like this and i cut out this shape okay so i had to use the lace fabric at the top like this because i'm not going to you know, use the lace all over the whole pocket just at the top so that by the time i stitch it in so let's assume that I have stitched in my pocket from this side what you'll be seeing is the you know the pocket will be inside then you just um, be seeing it as in with the same lace instead of seeing only the satin at this side it's not supposed to be like that so your pocket the pocket bag and your main fabric should be the same so that it will not be so obvious okay so that's why I stitched the lace at the tip of the the satin so that's how it's just going to be inside so i opened up this space so from this point to this point is about eight inches and that is what i have here so i'm just going to turn it to the other side and fix the pocket so i've made a video on this channel on how to actually you know sew your pocket to your gown so I'm just going to do that now. So remember, our lining is separate. So I started to stitch the lining. That I hemmed the main fabric separately and the lining separately. So even after, after fixing the pocket, we we'll still have it as inseam finishing because the lining would cover the pocket and the pocket would just be in between the main fabric and the lining. Okay. So this is the space for the pocket. Now I'm just going to pick it. It's going to be like this. Okay. So this is the pocket bag. It's just going to be like this. So you take it and um, you place it this way. So you're going to like stitch it. How I usually arrange it like main fabric to main fabric like this. Okay. So that when I stitch it here. Let me hold it with pin so you understand what I'm doing. So I'm just going to, I'm going to stitch it here like this. So let me use my pin to hold it. 
so that it will be clear to you. So I'll go, I'll just stitch it this way. So don't forget, main fabric to main fabric like that. So you go ahead and stitch it inside. So by the time I finish holding it with my pin, I'll go ahead to stitch it and you'll see what we have there. So I'll also be stoning the African print part. So by the time I stitch it, you see what we have. Okay, it's just going to look like this. And this one as well, main fabric to main fabric. So you place it where you have your opening like this. Okay, so it must align with this one. So this is where we are starting it. So I hope you see what I'm doing. So I would also pin it there. Okay, so by the time I'm done pinning and then I go ahead to stitch, this is what it will look like then. This one will then be stitched this way, okay? So you continue with your seam allowance, then you go this way. You stitch this way, you come back here, you continue with your seam allowance, and you have the pocket. So by the time you now fix it in, it would just sit where. So I would like to also pin it so that you would see it before I go ahead to stitch. Okay. So assuming I have stitched it all around. So by the time we turn to the other side. Now we turn to the other side, you will see the way it would look. Let me put this aside. So you see what we have here. So it won't be that obvious that there is pockets. You can see because we have the lace inside. So and instead of wasting the lace covering the whole of the pocket bag, it's better to just fix it at the edge like this, okay? And you have it there. And this is our pocket. It will be in between the main fabric and the lining in there. And inside the pocket, you have the satin feel. So it's just so, so nice. So I'll go ahead and finish it up, okay? Also fix my pocket at this side and I would stone it. So this is the final look of our boo boo with pocket. I hope you like this video. Please give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends. So I actually use stones on it, but I don't know why it's not blinking. The camera is not doing justice to this. Please don't forget, if you have not subscribed, subscribe. Join this wonderful family. And don't forget to turn on your notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll be among those that will be notified. Thank you so much. I would love to see you in my next video. Remain blessed.